Soccer can be a cruel game. Atalanta had it all. Global admiration, guts, team spirit and a 1-0 advantage against the prima donnas of Paris. Then, in the space of two minutes, the team of Thomas Tuchel completed a turnaround to break their quarterfinal jinx in dramatic style and advance to the last four of the Champions League. How different it could have been. Atalanta was never phased by Paris Saint-Germain. That was to be expected. The team of coach Gian Piero Gasparini has played front foot soccer all season long. It is what got the Italian club to the last eight of the competition in the first place. Atalanta's defensive line was so high that they often played with eight or nine players on PSG's half. Mattia Caldera was one of three centre-backs who was often to be found in French territory. Rafael Toloi, another centre-back, facilitated Mario Pasalic's 26th-minute goal. The Brazilians' incursion in the French box left Pasalic free to pick out a corner. It was a well-worked goal and a testimony to Atalanta's philosophy. PSG, on the other hand, was hesitant and disjointed. From the onset, there was something jittery about the serial French champion, Neymar's incredible third-minute miss, the fragility of their midfield and the glaring sense this 11 had no cohesion. The team had no semblance of a personality. On the touchline, Tuchel looked stunned. With a broken metatarsal, he sat, Bielsa-esque, on a cooler box. The uninhibited off-starts were playing from memory, doing what they did best. His PSG, again, looked less than the sum of its parts. The team was short of ideas. The flip side of Atalanta's unrelenting commitment to offensive soccer was obvious, PSG would exploit the space left in behind. At times, Atalanta's defense emptied out. It was a high-risk and cavalier strategy. First, PSG's number 10 side footed an extraordinary chance off target, then he finished without conviction waiting for Mauro Icardi's run before the Brazilian completed a conspicuous hat-trick of misses in the 42nd minute. It was a night on which Neymar did what he sometimes, or often, does. He infuriated with simple misses, but also elicited admiration for bursts of genuine quality, whenever his team channeled the ball through him. The Brazilian, you sensed, wanted this, a little too much even. He was not patronizing the modest Italian opponent. PSG relied on its Brazilian talisman and he tried to answer the call, breaking the lines and creating the danger. Neymar was the best player on the pitch, but also seemed burdened by Tuchel's simplistic plan to simple hand him the ball. All night long, there was a nervousness around PSG's game, invisibly hamstrung by the humiliating eliminations of past seasons. After a disjointed first 15 minutes in the second half, Tuchel finally released Kylian Mbappe, who had been benched returning from injury. With the introduction of the French star, the match's intensity doubled.